welcome to True Vine Time, Enough Radio Broadcast. We are so delighted and happy to come to you in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We believe in God-powered preaching, sound doctrine teaching, compassionate reaching, and hallelujah praise. You just heard the song by our late minister of music, Brother Keith Young, as he said, as long as the Lord is on our side, we will make it somehow. Can I get a witness? At this time, we're going to ask Minister Anthony Evans to come and lead us to the throne of grace in prayer. Oh Lord, how excellent is thy name. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. Most gracious and all wise, everlasting God. It's once again that we come before your throne of grace to thank you, Father, for another day, one that we've not seen before and one that we shall never see again. Thank you, Father, for last night's rest and this morning's early rising. Thank you, Father, that you did not allow the bed that we slept in to become our cooling board. We pray this morning, Father, that you will bless those who are sick and shut in, those who are behind prison bars, those who are homeless and those who do not have enough food to eat. Forgive us, Father, for our sins, be they word, mind, or deed, and forgive us for our shortcomings and those things that we've done contrary to your will. We pray now, Father, that you would bless our pastor, bless his family, and all of your children everywhere. We come now, Father, to ask that you will prick our hearts, open up our minds, that we might be receptive to your word on this day. Father, that we might not only be uh, hearers of your words, but doers of your word. We pray now, Father, that you'll come and bless everyone who says, pray for me, that we might be able to do what thus saith the Lord. We pray, Father, now that we might love our neighbors, as your word says, love our neighbor as we do ourselves, that we might be open and receptive to what you would have for us. We pray now, Father, that you'll come and have your way. In this, say, in this service on this day, even over the airwaves, we pray now, Father, that you would open up our minds, that we might be partakers of the fruit that you would have for us on this day. Now, Father, we pray that you would come sup with us, if only for a little while. Open up our minds and our hearts, and that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. For it's in Jesus' mighty name that we do pray and give praise and let everyone who the redeemed say, Amen. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I'm happy today as we celebrate our Black History Month here at Lincoln Park. And today, we have a lovely young lady, my granddaughter, that's going to come and give you a Black History presentation. Her name is Aria Morris, and her parents are Brother Teron Morris, who is our producer, and my daughter, the mother, Takara Morris, whose lovely voice that you hear at the end of every one of our NFI YouTube broadcasts. And we thank God for them. Constance Baker Motley was born September 14, 1921 in New Haven, Connecticut. Motley first took an interest in the law when she was turned away from a public beach as a teenager because she was black. This event led her to immersing herself into the black freedom struggle. Motley was the first black woman to attend Columbia University School of Law and received her law degree there in 1946. She then began working at the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. 
where she clerked for Thurgood Marshall. Motley was a key legal strategist, representing Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement, helping de to desegregate Southern schools, buses, and lunch counters who worked on multiple civil rights cases, and was the first African-American woman to argue a case before the Supreme Court winning nine out of the 10 cases. Motley made history in 1964 as the first black woman ever elected to the New York State Senate. In 1965, she was chosen Manhattan Borough President, the first woman and first African American in that position. In 1966, appointed by President Lyndon Johnson, Motley became the first African American woman to serve as a federal judge. Motley believed that her presence made a difference and was known to say, as the first black and first woman, I am proving in everything I do that blacks and women are as capable as anyone. Constance Baker Motley died September 28, 2005. And now, the morning message. As I said in the beginning of this year, 2021, I want you to win. And ultimately, it's so good for us to know that Christ himself wants us to win because he said that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Furthermore, most importantly, I want our children to win. So as adults, we don't have time to fuss and fight or gripe or complain. Because there's a world out there, and our children are growing and coming up in it. Can I get a witness? There's the world's economy, nation's budget, and there are states, counties, and cities all over the world that are managing revenue and dollars and cents for everybody one way or another, regardless if they are fair, equitable, or not. So, look at this. Last month, we talked about the six elements of achievement and development, which are desire, faith, discipline, preparation, plan of action, and commitment. And this month, as we celebrate Black History Month, I want to talk and focus this month on responsibility. Responsibility. Last year, I challenged our young people to learn and speak before the church congregation. I called it the pastor's challenge. And I challenged them to quote a saying by Frederick Douglass. I was elated, and the parents and the church family, they were all so proud that our young people here were quoting the words of uh, this black historian, and they were doing it with verbatim. Then the virus came and we stopped the challenge in March of 2020, along with our regular in-house worship services. But we never stopped worshiping the Lord at home. It doesn't matter where we are, we can always worship God anywhere, anytime, in any place. Even if we have to do it silently, we can always find a way to commune with him. However, this year, I'm bringing back Frederick Douglass again to you that are listening and watching. And this time, the challenge is for and to you, young or old. I know that many of you that are seniors remember that it was President John F. Kennedy that said, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. 
Here, I believe that the president was challenging all Americans to contribute in some way to the public good. However, the saying that I'm about to share with you, I believe that Frederick Douglass is saying, don't look or count on what your country can do for you, but what you can do for yourself. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Don't look account on what your country can do for you but what you can do for yourself there's only one that you can always count on and that is God and his son is Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior so I thank God that the government is trying to agree to do something monetarily uh, so many in need during this time of job loss, business shutdowns, unpaid rent and mortgages, etc. It's really a time of need. I heard Judge Michael Morgan say uh, just a few days ago, he said, I've never seen it so dim. I've never seen it this grim. And I've never seen it this slim. Surely this is a good time for any kind of help or relief that may come from any source. But how long will that last? And how long will we be able to count and depend on it? There's a difference in having a problem and are being in a predicament. A problem is something that has a solution and can be gotten past. A predicament is something that on has to deal with, but a predicament is something that one has to deal with, but cannot solve in the sense that one can devise something that will make it go away. The problem can be solved. The predicament, we have to lean and depend on a miracle or something uh, exceptional to happen to turn things around. But anyway, we, as we say, we know that there's nothing too hard for God. I want to challenge and while we are going through this COVID crisis, many of us cannot go but one way, and that way is up. So let's speak things that are not as though they were concerning our destiny, knowing, as I said, that there is nothing too hard for my God. There is nothing too hard for your God. There is nothing too hard for our God. Can I get a witness? Well, let me go back to what Douglas said. Douglas said, our destiny is largely in our own hands. He said, if we find, we shall have to seek. If we succeed in the race of life, it must be by our own energies and our own exertions. Others may clear the road. But we must go forward or be left behind in the race for life. If we remain poor and dependent, the wealth of others will not avail us. If we are ignorant, the intelligence of others will do but little for us. If we are foolish, the wisdom of others will not guide us. If we are wasteful of our time and our money, the economy of others will only make our destitution the more disgraceful. I was so happy and proud and elated 
when so many of our young people were able to say that quote and speak those words that Douglas spoke to people that had been emancipated. But he wanted to motivate them to know that they couldn't count on somebody else like they were going to have to count on themselves and God if they were to be successful and have some of the things in life that they could enjoy. And we knew back then it, that would be very hard. But through struggles and through hard work and desire and faith and determination and commitment, many of them rose to the occasion. Many of them rose and were successful and, and, and outside of being beat on the plantations. And, and, and Frederick Douglass was one of them. When he was 16 years old, he was beat uh, quite a lot. He, he tried to escape several times, and finally he escaped, and he ended up in New York, and his life changed, and he ended up getting married and having children, and uh, sooner or later, <clears throat> down the line, he had his own newsletter, and, but he overcame a lot. But he had to work hard and do it for himself to make it happen. He bared responsibility for his future and he did not count on it to be in someone else's hand uh, and there there's a saying that it is said that the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why and we know that Two of the most important days in our life is when we are born again and accept the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior. So we know that is important to have a relationship with the Lord. It's important to know why we are here. And we know for the other reason is that he that had begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of the Lord. Cicely Tyson said, uh, and God bless her who she passed recently. God bless her soul. She said, parents can only give a good advice to the youth and put them on the right path. But the final forming of a person's character lies in their own hands. It lies in the hands of the children. It lies in the hands of the adults. It's never too late to make a step in another direction if you have the desire and the strength to do so. Frederick Douglass was an escaped slave who became a prominent activist, author, and public speaker. He was a wise and bold leader in the abolitionist movement. He wrote and delivered many famous speeches, but the first time I read that quote that I challenged the young people to learn here in Lincoln Park, the first time I read it was back in 1989, and I put it under the glass on my desk at home, and I read it often. I put it and got it in my spirit to know that I had to be responsible and take on 100% responsibility for my destiny. And I put all my trust and all my hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, if we already have something, why do we have to hope for it? But I put all my hope in him. And by putting my hope in him, then I knew I could bear the responsibility to whatever I faced or whatever I went after, that God would give me the strength and he would be the wind beneath my wings. And I even challenged myself to learn and say that thing myself. You know, my dad would say, <laughs> he taught me and he would say, the old folks would say, every tub has to sit on his own bottom. Just a few words 
But the old people could say something. If you were wise enough to understand it, sometime it may, you may take you decades. It may take you even after some of them are dead and gone. But a lot of those wise sayings had a lot of meaning, and you could learn a lot from them. They say every tub had to learn to sit on its own bottom. Wilma Rudolph said, never underestimate the power of dreams and the influences of the human spirit. We are all the same in this notion. The potential for greatness lies within each other. The Bible says that, says in uh, Galatians 6, 4 through 5 in the King James Version, but let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Pastor sees across town from us, said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Let's bear our burdens, and let's trust God, and let's take on the responsibility, and then we will have rejoicing. If nobody else even rejoice with us, we can rejoice in our own self. Why? Because we know and take on the responsibility and freedom comes with responsibility. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we come to you as humble as we know how. Give me thanks and praise for today and this time right now, God. Saying thank you for the word that we have just received. And God, we ask that you allow us to take out what needs to be taken out and pour in what needs to be poured in. Allow us to apply this word to our lives that we may continue to strive to please you. And right now, God, we ask you to continue to bless everyone that's under the sound of my voice. Bless everyone that has that ailment. Bless everyone that is going through bereavement. Bless everyone that right now is, is saying, what must I do to be saved? And right now, God, we ask that your healing and saving and delivering power go forth over the airwaves, go forth over the, the, the TV screens, go forth over the computer screens, and touch and bless right now in the name of Jesus. We ask that you continue to stand by and lead us as we strive to love people and help our community. And God, right now, we ask you to continue to give us strength to run on to see what the end is going to be. And God, right now, we lay at your feet all of our issues and our problems because in your word, you said, come to me that are heavy laden and burdened and you will give us rest. And right now, God, we're calling for the rest and the peace that is in you. We say thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Thank you for the healings that you're going to perform. Thank you for the ways that you're going to make. Thank you for the deliverance that's going to take part. Thank you for the salvation and the saved souls that are going to take part from just this message today right now, God. And God, we ask you to continue to hold us together. Bless us from the pastor to the babe, from the oldest to the youngest, from, from the least to the greatest. And right now, God, continue to let us fight the good fight of faith. Because, for we are confident that if you'll forever be our God, we can forever be your people. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. In Jesus' sweet name we do pray. Amen. Lincoln Park Holiness Church is about loving people and helping community. Our main objective is winning souls. You are welcome to partner with us or help sponsor this ministry and broadcast with a donation. Please visit our website at lincolnparkchurch.com and click the Let's Give tab at the top of the screen. Feel free to leave comments. You can also download the Givelify app on your mobile phone and look for Lincoln Park Church. Cash app, cash tag, Lincoln Park CRF. We are located at 13 Heath Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. God bless you, and we look forward to you joining us next week on NFI Radio and Catch the Wave from the number one radio station reaching the world with gospel music and preaching.